And we are back. Welcome back to the PT Graduate Podcast. Um, today, my guest, Mr. Gary Zabo. Did I pronounce that right, Gary? No. No. Thanks for trying. <laughs> you can uh, correct. The Z is silent. Sabo. 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 Yeah. Apologies. Yeah. And we haven't, right. I, I don't think we've actually met face to face. I think we've probably been in the same room as each other a number of occasions yep. at FedEx, probably, but yep. um, never actually kind of done the, the proper handshake. How are you? Who are you? <laughs> So um, apologies, but it's great to be able to uh, to do it virtually um, today. So uh, yeah, welcome yeah, along. Great. Thanks for your time. Oh, um, I'm excited so, to be here. Yeah, it's great. I love your background. I mean, people who um, are listening aren't going to be able to see that, but if they want to hit the link in the, the notes, which are going to go out with this episode, they'll be able to have a little snapshot of your um, your Star Wars set there or what it looks like. And it's pretty, pretty funky. Yeah. So, um, Gary, you're the, um, I'm working my way through the list of ambassadors, the PT ambassadors, and, uh, and you're obviously the ambassador for Taranaki. Um, That's correct. Yep. You're, you've, uh, you've presented at FITEX, so you're a FITEX presenter, a, yep. uh, a PT and ex-military man, and um, you're a bit of a kettlebell aficionado, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. But back in the days in Eastern Europe, there were nothing else. Right. Oh, yeah, that was a thing. And yep. because, um, it took a few years to get to us the pumping iron, which wasn't again. And it's wow, the fancy gym equipment. And that was the best, that was the wow for us. Yeah. And Kerebel was the uh, boring old, you know, outdated stuff. And yeah. now everybody's, you know, getting back to the root, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. That was the yeah. obvious choice of strength and conditioning. If you want to lift weights, yeah. Yeah. You have to do that. Funnily, the name of the kettlebell in Russian, Giria, and Giriavik means weightlifter. Ah. So still today, if you say weightlifter in Russian, yeah. that means the kettlebell lifter. Ah, okay. Interesting. Did not know that's that. The obvious, that's the obvious weight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so obviously you're in Taranaki being the, being the ambassador. What, um, and you've got a, I know you've got a, a boot it boot camp license there. Um, yeah. you've also got a, is it a studio you work from? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Yep. Tell us a bit more about your business and, um, and what you do. Yeah, I started as a part-time job at the bootcamp company, you know, just something for fun and, and see how it goes. And, and, uh, it just took over because it's just so much fun and, and why wouldn't you do something you love doing if you can get paid for it? Yeah. In my entire life, I'd done, um, training people but there was never a possibility to get paid for it yeah and it was shocking for me in new zealand like people do this for a living <laughs> it's <laughs> real and not like you're gonna get um you know billionaires but you can get a you know uh get away with it doing that and in taranaki here we got an indoor venue a small pt studio which is more of we call it the hub and the the pattern is the same thing in each class is the small group PT setting. Yeah. But from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to Mamzamba, Kerebels to circuits, all sorts of training mm. happening in the very same spot. But yeah, just the setting, the, the, the small group PT is the, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. And it's awesome. I'm loving it. <laughs> so do you do that in nearby? Is it. Uh local in terms of um where you are to where you do the the sessions Auckland people won't like it but it takes me less than five minutes i don't oh. have a playlist to work i've got a song to oh. work. <laughs> one song <laughs> if it's a guns and roses song it doesn't even finish <laughs> <laughs> that's luxury that is um that is true yep. uh true lifestyle um quality of lifestyle balance yeah we gave off kmart but we gave, you know five minutes work yeah yeah Make fantastic sure um, and then um, your indoor stuff with is with sorry, did you say it's a studio or um, is mm-hmm. it a gym? It's a studio. It's a barefoot studio. It's you know machines we're making them out of people. <laughs> so we got the kettlebells and and a lot of movement. Yeah, you can do a lot on the ground, and it's amazing for everybody for all these math it just makes them you know stabilize without thinking yeah the moms and bobs they can put the baby down or martial art always the falling you know yeah big empty room and yeah the trainer is the the center of that 
and everybody's in a circle forming like a yeah a circle <laughs> yeah a group yep. you know yep is together and, and work together and and and, and that's, what, that's how they describe it as well more of a, a group they sure. get together sure. more of a social gathering yeah the excuse is instead of drink or eating out is exercise but that's the me time for many people and the social interaction with like-minded people yeah absolutely yeah yeah it's that social connection isn't it it's so important yes yes and so you've got a bit of an mma background yourself is that right have you done that in your past yeah. or yeah. still behind the past <laughs> It's been a few years since I competed okay. in that. I still uh, compete in martial arts in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Yes. So last year I still uh, competed at Oceania Open and I scored a silver medal oh. there, which was a Pan Pacific uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu competition. I'm really proud of that because yeah. there was so little entry on my level with a, a master's free. Yeah. I was like, after that, I'm going down to adult. So I was uh, facing professional athletes. Okay. And I'm a... Uh, a full-time business owner with two little kids. Yeah. <laughs> I don't belong yeah. there. Yeah. And I still managed to, to score a silver medal there. Well done. But in terms of MMA, answering your question, mm. no, I don't. My last fight was in 2002. Okay. That's the early stages of after the first UFC, the first cage fights came out. They tried to copy it back home in, in Eastern Europe. And that was more like a, a multi-style kind of fight. Everybody's just figuring out the root set we should fight. And that was fun. That was fun. I like that. Mm, but, uh, mm. I had my time. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I interviewed uh, Matt O'Day from Coast Academy um, oh, a yeah. few weeks ago. Know, Do you Matt. know Matt? Have you come across him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty nice guy. Yeah, I know him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had him on a, a couple of episodes ago and um, I kind of got his his take on the, the Brazilian jiu-jitsu as well and how he's really, he's kind of in, incorporated his whole, whole business around that and the group mm -hmm. training uh, model that uh, that he uses and has people as as, as members and, and part of an ongoing program. You know, they work their way through the belts. And um, yeah, he's got a great, great little business going there and he's um, you know, looking to replicate it in, in multiple sites. It's growing. Yes. Certainly it's growing. quite interesting when you work in the which host a martial art um, with him as well mm. because he's suddenly uh, underneath two different um, you know authority one is the exercise new zealand one is the sport new zealand yeah and it's really spectacular now in covid because we got two different rules set <laughs> for one hour i follow this and that yeah. group of clients goes out and i follow that but it's okay you know they didn't have time to you know look after every single gym but the other differences like the customers or clients or members mentality approach or as a coach you know i find myself it changed me a lot as well by the way yeah i used to sell sessions to my clients because they ask how much is a session how many yep. sessions can i attend what's yeah. in a session how long is a session what's included as when you come to a martial art training you try it out if you like it from week one you're looking for the black belt which is 10 years in jiu-jitsu yeah. You never enter a gym and think, 10 years, I'm going to be here 10 years. I'm going to be so <laughs> going to... No, it just no. doesn't even cross your mind, no. Yeah. It's different, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Sure, sure is, yeah. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, I think there's some lessons we can pick from that because one of the things he said was that uh, a mate of his um, who runs a more traditional boot camp had adopted the, the whole belt color thing and used it from uh, the same point of view sort of progressing clients through stages and all they did was they used t-shirts instead of belts and and as people had been there for longer periods of time and had, had progressed to a more advanced um, I guess program they had a different t-shirt to signify that and I thought that was quite a clever you know adaptation of something that's that's been in place for a long long time it helps um, keep people in the program, so you you, you get yeah. that retention, but also that recognition of of achievement as well, which is you know a, a pretty impressive thing when you've been like you say you know ten years to black belt. That's a serious commitment. Mm. Would be interesting to see how you scored that. Yeah, I don't know because you can't go just with the fitness test because not everybody can or wants to 
progress forever. Like if yeah. you yeah. come to a session using a 12 kg kettlebell, mm. all right, your next goal is 16. And then oh, you, you know, mm. I don't know how would you, because they do grow in understanding of fitness, movement, or even if you just stop aging someone, that's a black belt, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But how you put that in a, in a you know on a, on a whiteboard when you can pick it off? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. They it didn't go into a lot of detail in terms of how it's measured and how it's managed. Um, but you know, as a concept, I thought it was quite a good a good adaptation of a, a modern boot camp. Yeah. Um, so anything what anything what put the member client onto a journey instead of focusing on just today. Yeah making the most out of enjoying the session because often you don't in martial art you get beaten up mm. and you come back like <laughs> like a stockholm syndrome like yeah you abuse, then you go back you just get me a <laughs> kick, then you go back same as in, in training like if you if you're really unfit yeah you're gonna go through pain i'm sorry mm. to say but you, you're gonna go through pain yeah. but yeah. you still have to go back yeah everything uh long term you know goal out flag out play it's good yeah, it is. It is. You're clearly very passionate about the whole kettlebell thing, and it's something you've you've mm -hmm. adopted as your sort of your area of speciality uh, because you've presented on that at, um, at our national conference, fitness mm -hmm. conference. What um, and obviously you kind of alluded to it at the beginning in terms of well, that was that was all that was available, and that is what you did. But um, so where is it taking you now, and in, in terms of what you do with kettlebell in your your day to day business? Uh... I, I just love that the, it just, you can use it so many for different goals and also the what, what sells the kettlebell a lot is uh, you don't necessarily get big from it. If you want to uh, get big and bulky, the kettlebells are maybe not the best yeah. tool. But if, um, if you want to get strong, if mm. you want to be injury free, if you look mm. at the injury rate of uh, kettlebell sport athletes, one yeah. of the, the smallest. Is and that right? yeah, yeah. I don't know why, because you do lift heavy. Like, I, I understand why, but uh, it's, it's quite shockingly low. <laughs> the person, you constantly have to stabilize the kettlebell. It's not yeah. stable. Yeah. As a barbell, a dumbbell, it sits in the middle of the mass in, in your palm. There's yeah. always. We will be outside. Yeah. You can lift heavier if it's a dumbbell or barbell or a machine, but you can't because it's just so in unstable. Yeah. But that makes you functionally fit for whatever yes. you're doing. Yes. I mean, you're picking your child out of the car or groceries or mm. playing rugby. You can't uh, do a heavy snatch without engaging your core. Mm. It's going to be the same engagement when you hold the ball in rugby and you run across the field. Yes. That's the F word, functionality. Yeah. Thin. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, people, people love it. And, and I can do a hundred session, never repeat. It's just always different, always different. Mm. You can work for time, for repetition, for all sorts of, you know, I can, I can make a cranking session with tiny kettlebells. Or I can I can prove that you can actually lift the heavy one. Mm. It's, yeah, I never get bored of it. Yeah, I bet. Did, did, that, yeah. did I answer your question? I wasn't sure if I got it right. <laughs> yeah, no, you did. You did. I mean, you confused kind of, like, oh, no, no. I if I got it right, try. It. <laughs> you know, that's the thing I like about the the podcasts is that you know you can ask a question, but it can kind of quickly take you in different tangents, and so you know you get the answer to the question, but you get a whole lot more as well. So um, yeah, no, you you nailed it, and then you gave me some some extra. So that's <laughs> okay. that's, that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, so um, so in your week, if a, you know a typical week mm -hmm. of work is the is the kettlebell sort of fifty percent, eighty percent, ninety percent of of the the tools that you use, or is it? It sounds like it's a lot, but it, you know, how would you sort of you know put that percentage in terms of how much of your time is or clients' times using kettlebells? Quite a bit, quite a bit. I would hmm. say 30%. Okay. 30% martial art. Yeah. And the rest is everything else. Yeah. 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 All okay. other sort of training. Sure. 
yeah. yeah. So a big chunk, definitely a big chunk. Yeah, that's good. I'm that, I was surprised that that stat that you just mentioned about uh, injury rates being, you know, so much lower uh, for kettlebell athletes compared to more traditional weight athletes. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that, but it does make sense, doesn't it? In terms of the fact that you're carrying an, an odd shaped load, non, not central to your body. Sometimes it is, but if it's one handed, it's generally off center, which immediately demands more of the core. And if you're engaging it more frequently, you've got that neural pathway that's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So you've got an incredibly powerful inner unit that's always going to create a stable base for those global movements that come after you've after you've sort of set up for a movement um yep. which obviously most cases, yeah you go most cases uh one-handed yeah no offense but most of people use the, the double arm uh swings uh we don't right this right. is one-handed which yeah. makes you immediately out of balance it puts yeah. you sideways but yeah if you lift the heavier one a bigger percentage of your body weight then you're off balance already yeah. Your spine is kind of pulling side of it. You have to brace to put it yeah. back just to get started. You're not going to lift it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah plus, the, plus the wobbliness, you're more likely to drop the kettlebell or put it down quick than fail as in a machine. You yes. just crank it, just push it as hard as you can until something pink or pop. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You're right. So, yeah, that makes total sense. It's going to hit the floor before something goes wrong, generally. Whereas if you're stuck in a machine, you're going to be able to get that machine to an end range, which then the damage could be done to you rather than the machine. Yeah. Yeah. Humans, yeah. we are not made to be symmetrical. I do respect, I have great respect for uh, Western uh, weightlifting. Mm. They grab the bar with two hands, but mm. they're not made. Either right or left-handed. A really small percentage is double-handed. Yeah. Uh, think yeah. about chopping a wood. They're not symmetrical. One side on the front. Uh, think about the box there. One leg is on the front. Every yeah, yeah. you know human movement, you're not made to be symmetrical. When you grab that one up, it just yeah, it feels more natural. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It's interesting. I've been spending a lot of time with my clients, obviously prior to lockdown, um, getting that um, awareness of difference between left and right. You know that um, imbalance because everybody has a dominant side and a non-dominant side. And, um, and highlighting the functional difference between the, the non-dominant and the dominant to them when they do a particular movement and then sort of let that, that light bulb goes on, they realize that there's quite an imbalance. And so we've been shifting the work towards two thirds on the non-dominant side and one third on the dominant side for, for what we've been doing in the sessions. And I think that's, that's really helping to create some of that safety and stability that you talk about with, with mm. kettlebell. So I think, I probably need to increase the amount of kettlebell work I'm doing with them as well and get some of that, that more single-sided work going on. You can. That's good. <laughs> yeah. You know, thank you. It's kind of like a, a mental light bulb went on off for me as well. It's like, I think I'm on the right track, but actually I probably need to go the next level in terms of uh, pushing that non-dominant side. So it functions more evenly with the, the dominant side. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to pick your brain, Gary, because uh, you recently did a, actually today, you did a, an interview for the, the PT Council on, um, you know, bouncing forward. And I guess it's, it's very relevant because we're recording this while Auckland's still in level three. Uh, luckily, you guys are in, in level two down in, in Taranaki. Uh, so you're able to, to see clients face to face. But we've all had to go through this, this lockdown process. And, you know, it's been a real challenge for, for fitness businesses because we're a face-to-face -face business, unless, of course, we have a strong online business as well, which not everybody does. You talked about um, coming out of uh, lockdown and being, you know, being successful, carrying on a, a strong business. And, and I think I read in the notes that you increased your business quite a lot while you were in lockdown or, or while we were working Absolutely. online. Yeah. After that, but it was a result okay. of the lockdown. Okay. Uh, just around the first lockdown we had, uh, I had a chance to go on a meeting when there was a guy from Australia who is actually an uh, Indian, Scottish, Australian guy, Sam Cawthorn, and he lost his, one of his um, arm in a car accident, a horrible accident. Right. And he not just came back to where he was, he bounced forward. Right. He gained from the huge loss, to say. And he wrote a book 
a really good book, 111 Ways of Bouncing Forward. Okay. And that was the motivation for me to use it to, because that was for me, bounce forward. We need to go not just where we were, because yeah, I find it true. Like people wanted to go back to their normal. No, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, really how it was in 2019, it's gone. It's, yeah, you can get back to that. True. Unless you time travel. So when you, when we when we you know want to recover, I want to bounce forward. I thought, okay, I'm shut. I'm in a low lockdown. I can't access my gym. I forced to be at home. What can I do? Yeah. So I read up as much as I could. I went to as many seminars and online training as possibly could. Mm. Learn and just pull my business apart and put it back together. And I thought I was doing good. I, I, ha- I did have a, a paper in, in uh, marketing, so I was pretty cool uh, about it. Yeah. I shouldn't have. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> so so long, long time ago. And if you don't keep your, you know, things updated, it's just, it's not the same. That paper was from 1999, 1998. So... Yeah, I needed a bit of an update and it was super helpful how to see my business and really um, zoom on and just filter out what is my secret sauce, what is my essence, what is my specialty, my niche, what no yeah. one has. Yeah. Not in a, in a way of why I am better than anyone else, because I'm not, but I'm so unique. What makes me unique? Mm. And that's where I realized I'm swinging kettlebells for 30 years. I'm doing uh, martial arts since 1993. Like, why I'm doing boot camp so much? Why not focusing on something? I've got greater experience than anyone else here. Mm. And I start uh, focusing on that. And the more I I fine-tuned and and filtered my business, what is the, the core of it, I'm really passionate. And and I wouldn't mind to work for free if, if there was food on the trees or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, because I'm, I'm loving it. Sure. And that helped me with my, um, how to introduce myself to, to anyone, how to talk about my product to anyone. And that helped me to display my product, my, my services a lot correctly. I just said that today in the meeting, like I used to have a lot of annoying clients. They were not, but I found them annoying. I was so grumpy. I yeah. called them fire kickers. I called them time waster. <laughs> no, my marketing was inaccurate. Right. Because I said, I train everybody. Anyone can come. We are an all-inclusive team. It's good for everybody. Yes. Yeah. Everybody. When in reality, no. I mean, let them pick. Don't, like, I said it in this morning, like, we go to a restaurant where they cook every food all the food they want you want mm. oh, tons of it i don't know yeah, how dark, yeah. yeah but if it's a uh italian pizza shop run by an italian guy mm. that's what he does for 30 years take my money hell yeah bring, bring me your favorite i don't even want to <laughs> yeah oh, many yeah and so we start communicating to our um top one the, the social media channels uh, true identity, who we are. Mm. So the clients coming to now, the lead, mm. are a lot more qualified. They mm. don't have questions so you, maybe you, about you parking can. or something, but nothing nothing weird, nothing like, oh, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Questions. Yeah. And a lot easier sales. Mm. So the number of leads dropped since we changed the marketing strategy. Yeah. But the quality of the leads increased heaps. Yes. spending more time um, putting myself out on um, window display on my shop front. Yeah. But it shows, it displays an accurate uh, picture of who am I and what yeah. am I doing. Yeah. Yeah. So whoever comes to the door, they know what they want. They know they trust, they like, they just wearing the money. I yeah. want to join in. Right. So then pre qualified. Yes. We're having sign up without actually meeting me. Like, Mm. If you want to come for a trial, you know, <laughs> but, okay, okay. If you want to sign up or I just see that on, on the internet, what a membership, yeah. yeah, which is great. Like it's working. That's awesome. So, yeah. That was the, 
uh, identifying the avatar, the ideal client, my dream client, the person who is I want to work with. Because yeah, I could work with everybody, but it's mm. not really my niche. Mm. I quite like my age, 10 years plus my age, something, you know, oh, my yeah. age is. Yeah. So I just don't click with teens anymore. That's great. I still have great passion for kids, though. I run the kids, uh, martial arts session, and mm. I'm absolutely loving it. Yeah. But that's, again, a different, you know, place. Identifying what sort of people, are, where they're located, the more clearly I could describe, mm. better my communication was. Mm. Because do they read the newspaper? Are they on TikTok? Yeah. Yeah. Up, and so on. I mm. can tell us where mm. they will be, where they hang out. Yeah. And yeah, a lot more efficient communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's better that way, checking out who we are, and when they do make contact, it just happy faces everywhere. No disappointment. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a win-win, isn't it? Because you know you, you've got clearer, better leads coming in. They're more likely to sign up or, or already pre-signed up, and you, you haven't got any um, right tire kickers. Um, and you probably don't end up with any of those annoying clients because they're they're in the wrong place. You haven't got any of people in the wrong place. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a winning it's a winning formula. <laughs> so if, yeah. if that book hasn't been written, that's probably the next the next book <laughs> is is Gary's version. Yeah. Brilliant. So yeah. is that the um is that the thrust of of what you talked about bouncing forward? Is are there any other elements in that message? Uh just thinking, you know, how can you um get into a better position, what position you want to be. And I find myself and, and some other trainers as well. Reaching something to their clients, but they don't do it themselves. So if I if I decide I need to have a more constant uh, uh, marketing in terms of putting out what we do every day to Instagram, Facebook stories, and and live videos, mm. have to be consistent about it. Yeah, that same what we did do to the client. You're not yeah. achieving your goals because you're not putting up the sessions, darling. <laughs> but the same with me. Yeah. I have to put those posts out. I have to send the email newsletter out every week. I have to do those things. I have to be consistent. Yeah. And and just, you know, as you grow, we talked about it this morning as well. Mm. Often, what um, people experience is they grow their problems as well. So mm. they scale up their size of their business, but it's just like a humor. You know, that part you hate. You know, or, yeah. Uh, admin. You know, mm. nobody likes it. You want to mm. train people. You don't want to spend time. Then outsource it. If I can do a PT session with you, how much can I charge for it? Yeah. How yeah. much does it cost to outsource my admin? It's a lot cheaper. Then it's no brainer. Train uh, you for an hour, and Absolutely. someone has been doing my paperwork, and yeah. I make profit on it. Yeah. Swap those things around, because that's how I want to see myself in a in the future and building those systems up every now and then to to move forward mm, mm. not necessarily growing i don't think everybody should have a, a multi-millionaire you know company which you know have many locations i don't think it's for everybody mm. but you want to grow to a, a level where you know you earn what you're worth yeah 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 you're right and i think that doing some of those things or doing all of those things certainly takes you in that direction, doesn't it? Because it's fine tuning, fine tuning the business, getting it to the point where it's doing exactly what you want it to do. And you're using your time smart by outsourcing some of those tasks that not everybody enjoys doing, but someone else could do. That was just an example, mm. but the mm. thing is, I was with a client, I want to lose a 30 kg. What's going to do? Well, it's not going to happen today. <laughs> Yeah. But we're going to set up a long-term goal. Yeah. And in the long-term goal, we're going to have small-term goals. We're yeah. going to check your diet. We're going to have veins. We're going to have, you know, a bit less mentally stressing, uh, maybe tape measure instead of scales and so on. We've got yeah. a, a long project going on. And, and same with the business as well. Mm. If, if you want to make seven figures, mm. that's not going to happen tomorrow unless no. you win the like, jackpot. No. So how are you going to get there? How many clients do you need? Yeah. How many clients you can fit in your gym? 
Oh, yeah. that's never going to happen. So you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You've got to step through those processes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's good. I like it. I wish I'd been at the uh, session. Maybe there's a recording I can go back and watch. That is. Uh, cool. We'll upload it later on. Yeah. Okay. I did record it. Awesome. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll go and look that up. Yeah. Um, so any you other systems. you've you've been very generous already, Gary. You've <laughs> You've, you've given me um, a lot of the, the meat from, from the presentation that you gave this morning. Is there any that's other right. tips? That's cool. Any other tips or tricks that sort of that work for you specifically, Gary, in, in your business, in your region? Uh, not so much what worked for me, but as it could work for all of us as fitness professionals, instead of okay. looking at each other as enemies, yeah. yeah, all of us would find our niche we would realize you, my friend, are running a McDonald's shop and I'm running a Michelin star restaurant. We might look like in the same industry, but I don't think we are competitors. Yeah. If yeah. I run a, you know, a Michelin star restaurant, uh, a chip shop won't be a threat. Yeah. Don't look at them as threat. We could work together if, you know, and I'm quite disheartened uh, how people can help each other on an international forum, but not so much on the local forum. So you, you better have someone overseas, but not your local guy. Yeah. And it comes from the insecurity. Oh, if I have that person, they get better and they might steal my client. Yeah. But really? Yeah. No. That means that client never supposed to be with me. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it makes the client seem um, robotic rather than a human being that's already connected with somebody else. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that, and I think yeah. I think that really is. I think that is the essence of getting it right, isn't it? Just finding that niche, being very very clear about who your customer is, and then just talking to that customer and not everybody else, like the Italian restaurant, not yeah. trying to do yeah. everybody else's food from around the world. No. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. No. I tend to often overanalyze things, and I think that that was a great contributor to think. And two of my favorite quotes, I always have it in my head. Yeah. One is, um, if you hit an old oak tree a thousand different places with a stick, nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. But if you hit it in the same spot a thousand times, you wanna, you're going to bring that tree down, right? And yes. it just inspires me to work hard. You're going to get that the tree but another quote in my head kind of fighting this one it's from einstein albert einstein and it, it says stupidity is not doing something wrong it's doing the same wrong thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome yeah yeah and sometimes i work my butt i think about it who am i yeah. am i the guy with the stick in the tree and i'm just about to bring it down yeah no I'm doing the same stupid thing over and over again, expecting different results. Okay. How yeah. can I step back and make sure I'm the guy with the stick? Yeah. Not wasting. Yeah. Because if you look at, I, I, I love the motivational quotes around hard work, mm. but if you look at the most hardworking people in the world. You go to Africa, you go South East Asia, they're the poorest people in the world. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work, does it? Yeah. Not so, only the hardest working people are there gonna make yeah, it. No, yeah. they're not. But maybe they're the happiest. Who knows? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. But I think you're yeah. right. And it comes down to working smarter, not harder, doesn't it? You know, it's it's easy, yeah. but it's relatively easy for everybody to work harder, but not necessarily everybody steps back, like you say, and thinks, well, how can I work smarter? And that's what mm -hmm. it's about. Yeah. But it will still take hard work, but you need to use yeah. your hard work smarter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a hack. It's not a shortcut. Yeah. yeah. So it's sharpening the saw, isn't it? It's, um, I can't remember who it was who said that. It's about sharpening the saw for two hours and using it for one, as opposed to trying to use it for three. Yeah. 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 I like it. That's good. I love yeah. those quotes too. They're, uh, they can be pretty empowering and inspiring. It makes you question yourself a bit, but <laughs> yeah, it's good. I think that's important, isn't it? You know, to do those self audits and then take that time out to to review. 
Yeah. All right. That's good. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Gary. It's a good one to end on. I like those inspirational quotes, as I say. So let's go out and find some more Thank inspirational you. quotes. Yeah, thanks. We'll have to organise a, a proper catch-up next time we're in the same city. Yeah, I mean, you can let that. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Gary. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.